guys. I hope you're doing well today. Um, today's sermon is called The Dreaming Hour. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done. Father, strengthen me for the journey today, Lord God. I pray that you just permeate my words with your spirit. Let my words not fall on deaf ears today. Open people's ears and open their eyes to to what you're saying. What you're saying to my words today. Strengthen us all for the journey, God. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, I was I was thinking of last week, I was thinking of um this um I was what I was in church last week. No, this happened when I was up, up at night, um, like just lying in my bed and thinking and making all these plans and dreaming and stuff. And I was thinking of everybody needs a dreaming hour. Sometimes life gets so busy and so bogged bogged down with all the stuff of life with the kids and with whatever's going on, we forget that we need that we need to dream and get vision from the Lord. And some of you guys are wondering why you're feeling so empty and so stuck. He, and God says, it's because you don't have a dreaming hour. You don't have a time where he can fill you with his spirit and with his vision. Sometimes we get so bogged down in life, as I said, we forget that um, we need to take time to breathe and to not only breathe, but we need to take time to dream. And everybody's dreaming hour time is different for some people. It's in the morning for some people like me. It's in the wee hours of the morning. Some people it's late at night. But the Lord is asking for a special time to just be with each of his children. And in that dream, in that dreaming hour, he gives you vision and revelation, not only for the future, but for the past and divine strategy uh, for what he would have you do. And he gives he gives strength for the journey too. We don't we don't cause ourselves to dream past a child. When when you when you um are a child, you're encouraged to dream like um sin. We all have watch like Cinderella, Snow White, all of those things where people um, get visions for themselves. But somewhere along the way, we become adults and more um, cynical and we have children of our own and we have uh, stuff to do and we have a life to live and we have to get groceries, pick up the kids from school, uh, do all that stuff that we forget to stop and get envisioned from the Lord. And he wants every person to have dreamy hours, hours where they get vision, hours where they get revelation on their situation. So he says that I want my children, each of my children, 
to create a dreaming hour where they sit with me, where they sit alone and they get vision or revelation and they have they have a pen or something to record with where they can record what I'm showing them. See, God wants to show you where he wants to take you, but you've been so busy with your life that you've just not made time for him to do that. And he's asking, he's saying to you, I need a dreaming hour. I need time with you to show you what I want for you or who you are to me or to heal you. In that dreaming hour, God speaks to you. God speaks to you and he gives you revelation. He gives you strategy for your struggle. And when you have strategy for your struggle, the struggle doesn't seem so Thing. The reason why you're feeling that you're carrying things alone is that you're not letting him give you the strategy for your struggle. Um, you're just trying to do it alone and he's saying, I'm here to help you do it. You don't have to do it alone. You weren't called to do it alone ever. I don't want you to do it alone. I want time with you to give you vision and revelation on on what I need you from you and what and what will make your st strategy easier and I was listening to Michael Todd um, uh, last season when he was on um, making space with Hoda Copy on um, uh, on the Today Show. He was on making space with Hoda Copy and um, and he was talking about when he gets up in the morning he has uh, his quiet time before his kids get up and before his wife gets up. He has quiet time to read the word and to get new revelation. And that's what we all need. You're, you're so tired and stressed out because you're not get, getting strategy for your struggle from the Lord. You don't have a dreaming hour. You don't have any kind of hour. Your hours are filled and he's saying, I need you to make some time with me. I need you to invite me into your life past Sunday morning. I want to be with you every step of the way. You don't have to do this alone. I don't want you to do this alone. You were called to do this with me. I want to give you vision. I want to give you revelation. I want to give you strength. But you won't let me in. You won't create a dream hour. You won't, you won't create space for me in your, in your life. Um, you know, sometimes I like to listen to music at night. I have, I have a Google. And I'm subscribed to YouTube Premium, so that allows me to listen to anything at night. And sometimes I was, I, I, I was listening to the Greatest Showman soundtrack one night, and I was um, listening to the to the, to that song every night. I love fill my head a million dreams are keeping me Dreaming of the world I see a million dreams that all it's gonna take
So, I was thinking of that song and going, that's so me, like, when I lie in bed, I'm, I'm not seeing myself in this little apartment and, 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 and the kind of care I'm in. I'm seeing myself where I want to be, and I'm taking steps this year to get there and to, um, to my goals, and it's, and it's really quite a good thing. And sometimes the devil will, not sometimes, but even for me this morning, the devil will want to remind you, you will never be anywhere different. You will never do anything different. You will always be in this situation. But I'm sure the devil noticed today. You know what well, she had at my stream. I'm calling him a liar. I'm calling him a liar. I'm calling him a liar. And I hope you will join me. Don't ever let the devil tell you that what you're dreaming, what you're seeing, what God has given you is not possible. Because it is possible. Whatever you're seeing, it is possible. Not only is it possible, but with God, all things are possible. And it will happen. It will happen. Don't let the devil tell you that going to night school is a waste of time. Don't let the devil tell you that all your dreaming is a waste of time. That's a lie from hell. And I cast down every lie today and proclaim that you will be what God has called you to be. And he's called you to be greater than you are. The reason why you don't fit, the reason why little things are driving you crazy that never used to drive you crazy are because you're changing and the Lord is telling you that you deserve something greater and he's planned for you something greater whether it be emotionally greater whether it be physically greater whether it be spiritually greater don't don't put off that god-sized nudge don't ignore those visions because those those visions are that you're getting are from the Lord and they will always be from the Lord that you're getting them. Just because you're not in that situation now doesn't mean that he doesn't have a plan to take you there. Don't ignore the Lord and accept the devil's things because often uh, the devil's promptings are easier to accept because he focuses on the now. But God's promptings are harder to accept because he shows you what he sees for your life, for your children, for yourself in the future. And he wants you to know that what, what, what you're standing in now is just preparation. You won't be single forever. You won't be alone forever. You won't be, you won't be living in that apartment forever. You won't be just working that minimum wage job forever. He has greater for you. And the visions that you are seeing are from the Lord. He's saying, don't give up, don't quit. I know some of you are about to quit. But he's saying, don't, don't you dare quit on what I've given you. Because don't you know that you're greater than who you are? That you're called to be more than what you see? And that, that what you see is not who you are. It's just what is right now. But I have greater for you. 
and there is nothing you can't do with with a, with me by your side. I'm in your corner. I love you and there is nothing you can't do. And I can tell you right now, God is giving a divine vision to his people right now. There is somebody on this, at, under the sound of my voice. God is giving you vision that you can be a school teacher. Although they say you stutter and you can't talk, the Lord is giving you vision that you can be a school teacher. The Lord is giving you vision that you can have children, another person. Although the doctor says it's impossible, the Lord's going to give you children, and it might not be biological children. The Lord may may cause you to adopt children. Um, I, uh, a quick story about that. I was watching um, something on Netflix called um, um, it was, I forget what it was called, but it was by uh, a documentary with Tony Evans and the Kendrick brothers and some other people. And they were talking about fatherhood. And one of the Kendrick brothers was saying something about uh, how he and his what, how um, he was um, in the Word one day, and the Lord was dealing with him about adoption. Uh, he was looking in the wor Word one day about how uh, we are basically adopted by God. And the Lord said, put the date. And he did put the date, and like a year later on on the airplane uh he told his wife that i think the lord wants us to adopt so they went to china after the paperwork was done and whatever and picked up their little girl and on the day they brought home their little girl he looked at the date and in in his bible that he had but uh, and it turned out to be the same day the little girl either came home with them or lost her parent or or something happened on that day where you are This is not for everybody, but for somebody under the sound of my voice. Where you are is not where God wants you to be. He wants you to stop living in mediocrity. And I don't mean physical mediocrity so much as spiritual mediocrity or, um, or emotional mediocrity. I'll, a lot of you, he said some of you have been settling for mediocrity emotionally and spiritually. And he's saying, what you settle for is what you'll have. He said, come up greater. There's greater things for you. There's greater things in you that I want to do, but you have to fix your mind first. Get your mind right. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Lord wants to transform your mind. The Lord wants to show you who you are in that dreaming hour. That's another thing that the Lord wants to do in that dreaming hour. Some of you don't know who you are, and you're wondering, Lord, who am I? What am I called to do? The Lord says, you need a dreaming hour for me to show you who you are. Some of you are dealing with traumas and you're just trying to sweep it under the rug. The Lord says, 
you need a dreaming hour for me to show you how to deal with traumas, for me to either um, uh, heal you instantly or to, to, to show you to services with counselors that will help you with your trauma and teach you how to sit in your pain. You know, last night, you know, last night it was so funny. The Lord, the Lord had me sit, had me go back through my life and sit in certain uh, painful situations and feel the emotions of certain situations situations that I thought I had long forgotten, but I didn't, I didn't forget them, I just swept them under the rug. And what he had me do is name the situation and feel all the emotions, go back in my memory and feel all the emotions. And once I felt the emotions, I screamed, I cried, I did whatever I needed to do. And then I said, you can't hurt me anymore. And it was a time of healing for me. And he did that in a couple of situations in my life. Not right now, situations that I didn't know I hadn't dealt with. Sometimes you don't even know that you haven't dealt with a situation until it comes up. And, and the triggers to that situation are still there. Um, and that's, that's what happened to me last night. And I had to say, no, you can't hurt me anymore to the situation, not to a specific person. I said to the situation, you can't hurt me anymore. Because the problem with us is we don't like sitting in pain. We don't like sitting in pain. We, some of us like wallowing in it, feeling sorry for ourselves in our pain but we don't sit in it to get rid of it. Because in order to get rid of pain, you have to sit in it first and then confront it and say, you can't hurt me anymore. And what I mean by sitting in it is letting your body, letting your emotions feel whatever you felt in that experience and knowing that you're strong enough to deal with that. And that's what the dreaming hour does as well. The dreaming hour is also healing. And it allows you to sit in your pain and that's, and, and deal with your pain and sit with yourself and deal with yourself. You see, that's the issue. We don't like to deal with things and, and that's, what what is blocking some of us and that's what a dreaming hour that's what last night in my dreaming hour happened so not only dreaming for the future and revelation from god happens but healing happens in the dream hour emotional healing spiritual healing the dreaming hour is basically a time for God to talk to you, for him to just sit with you and go through your life with you. It may not even be big as pain or whatever. It may be strategies to tell you how to deal with household issues with your children, whatever you're dealing with. He wants to sit with you and give you strategies for your struggle but you're too busy to do that. And he's saying, I need you to create space for me. 
I need you to create space for me because I will not invade your space. I am a gentleman and although I could invade you, I will not do so. I need you to create space for dreaming, for healing, for revelation, for understanding. I need you to create space so I can heal and I can speak to you. And that space could be 20 minutes, it can be 5 minutes, it can be 10 minutes, it can be 30 minutes, whatever works with your life. And you have to ask God, what when can I fit in in my schedule? And he will show you in your schedule the days or when you can fit in just a dreaming hour to get dreams and revelation and to receive healing and to get perspective and to pray about uh, certain issues. and to get better and the dreaming hour actually uh to show us you yourself as you really are not as you pr pretend to be for other people but as you really are you can expose your vulnerabilities you can explode, expose places where you struggle and he can heal those places because when you go on about your daily life usually you can't expose places where you struggle and the dreaming hour is for that ah uh, when jesus was about to die on the cross he had he had, he had kind of a dreaming hour. Um, he said he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he got revelation of what he was supposed to do. And he said, if there's any way, Lord, let this cup pass from me. But if not, let your will be done. That was his, his dreamy hour. It was preparing him for what was going to happen. And sometimes, not always, your dreamy hour um, prepares you for what the Lord has planned for you. Not always, because sometimes the Lord surprises you. But sometimes your dreaming hour prepares you for what the Lord has planned for you. And the Lord really wants you to create a dreaming hour, an hour where you can just be alone with God, an hour that you can get um, revelation or where you can get re revelation, strategy, healing and strength, whatever you need from the Lord. And when I say hour, I don't mean time i mean um any kind of time that you can create for god it can be third your dreaming hour could be 30 minutes your dreaming hour could be 15 minutes it's just uninterrupted time with god a lot of you are are sleeping uh, spiritually and you want to be awakened and the Lord is saying start with your dreaming hour and that time will awaken you to his presence to your to his spirit and you'll start to feel him you'll start to sense him in your daily life if you have uh, that un uninterrupted time with him thank you guys for what for being with me today. I hope this was of edification to you. See you next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.
Bye, guys. See you next week.